spent nuclear fuel, sometimes called irradiated or used nuclear fuel, may be managed according to two possible strategies, the open fuel cycle or closed fuel cycle. Currently, some countries, such as the United States, adopt a direct disposal of spent nuclear fuel, so-called open fuel cycle. Some other countries, such as France, continue to develop the concept of the closed fuel cycle. Other countries store spent nuclear fuel and have postponed the decision on what to do with it in the future. This option is called wait and see. Main factors that influence their decisions are based on the successful development of safe and efficient reprocessing processes, public acceptance and economic issues. In the open fuel cycle option, the whole volume of spent nuclear fuel is considered to be waste and it is disposed of into an underground repository after cooling in a spent fuel storage facility. Cooling can be done on wet or dry ways. Usually, spent nuclear fuel is firstly put to a spent fuel pool where it is cooled by water, followed by cooling by air in dry cask storage. Both cooling methods last for approximately 30 years, although they can last longer. In the closed fuel cycle option, spent nuclear fuel can be recycled and uranium and transuranic elements can be further used in the nuclear industry in new nuclear fuels. In order to close the fuel cycle, new advanced nuclear reactors are required, able to burn transuranic elements included in new fuels. These are referred to generation 4 reactors and comprise six reactor technologies selected by an international forum, which are currently under development. Compared to the previous generation of reactors, generation four reactors were selected on the basis of being clean, safe and cost-effective, while being resistant to diversion of materials for weapons, proliferation and secure from terrorist attacks. Reprocessing of the irradiated nuclear fuel together with the generation 4 nuclear reactors can lead to sustainability of nuclear energy. The radiotoxicity of spent nuclear fuel does not depend only on uranium and plutonium, but also on fission products and minor actinoids. The significant part of the fission products belong to the group of lanthanoid elements that are, among others, responsible for the decrease of neutron flux in nuclear reactors due to their high neutron absorption cross-sections. They are also called neutron poisons. In the initial cooling period, the main isotopes contributing to the high radioactivity of the spent nuclear fuel are the fission products cesium-137 and strontium-90, both with a half-life of around 30 years. Although minor actinoids form only approximately 0.1% of the spent nuclear fuel mass, they are responsible together with plutonium isotopes for the long-term radiotoxicity of spent fuel. The most radiotoxic representatives of minor actinoids are Neptunium-247 with the half-life of 2.1 million years, then Americium-241 with its half-life of 432 years, and finally Curium-244 with its half-life of 18.1 years. Without any reprocessing, spent nuclear fuel needs almost 1 million years for its radiotoxicity to decrease to the level of natural uranium ore. During this time, spent nuclear fuel must be isolated from the environment. Moreover, no uranium will be recycled or plutonium produced for a new fuel fabrication. The first step in spent nuclear fuel reprocessing is the uranium and plutonium separation from the spent fuel by the Purex process. Purex refers to plutonium-uranium redox extraction.
The Purex raffinate can be treated in the advanced reprocessing facility to separate the still present minor actinoids, those mainly responsible for the long term radiotoxicity of spent nuclear fuel. Management of the minor actinoids may be achieved with a partitioning and transmutation strategy. The principle of the partitioning and transmutation strategy consists of the separation of minor actinoids followed by their transmutation to stable elements or short-lived radionuclides through a sequence of processes. This could be achieved either by some of the generation 4 nuclear reactors or by dedicated accelerator-driven transmuters. The accelerator-driven transmuters or accelerator-driven systems combine subcritical systems and a high-energy proton accelerator to transmute minor actinoids. Main goals of the partitioning and transmutation strategy are a decrease in volume of high-level spent nuclear waste, a decrease in time needed to monitor the deposited nuclear waste, a reduction of the long-lived radionuclides hazards to the environment and humans, a decrease in environmental footprint of the final deep underground repository, and a decrease in heat generation. Time dependencies of relative radiotoxicity of the disposed nuclear waste for various scenarios are shown in the figure. The graph describes time that spent nuclear fuel needs to decrease its radiotoxicity to the level of pitch blend, nature, uranium ore. Without any reprocessing, spent nuclear fuel needs almost 1 million years to reach this level. Separation of plutonium decreases the time to thousands of years and that of minor actinides and other long-lived radionuclides to 300 years. Originally, spent nuclear fuel separating processes were used only for plutonium production, which since 1940s has been used in nuclear weapons. Developing the spent nuclear fuel reprocessing usually consists of many steps and many different professionals are involved, including many separation scientists and radiochemists. However, the process itself and its implementation are clear applications of radiochemistry and its fundamental principles at an industrial scale.